本日お話を伺うのはニュージーランドの作家マデリン・チャップマンさんですマデリンさんは2021年11月26日にニュージーランドアーダーン首相世界を動かす共感力というご本を発表されましたお著書についてお話を伺いますどのようなきっかけがありアーダーン首相の電気をおかけになったのでしょうか Well, I was working as a journalist in Auckland when the Christchurch mosque attacks happened in 2019. And that was a, a very, very big news story and a big tragedy in New Zealand. That was the biggest shooting that has ever happened in, in New Zealand. And so I went down to Christchurch to report on it、um, as a journalist. And While I was there, I'm sure you will know that the, the response both to the shooting around the world was really big, but also Jacinda Ardern's response as a leader was, was broadcast all over the world.、Um, and I think it was because of the difference in response from her compared to some of the responses to the US shootings. from American politicians. And so while I was there, I, I saw a lot of the interactions that she had and speaking to the families of the victims. And she was very, very, very empathetic and very understanding and was very good in that situation. And it meant that overseas people saw that and realized that, oh, you can. Respond to these situations as a, as a person as well as as a politician. And so after that, I wrote a quite a long feature article about her response about the seven days after the attack. And in writing that, it really highlighted kind of where almost where her biggest strengths were as a politician, which were in responding to. Tragedy or things where it called on somebody to be human and warm as well as to have you know, political prowess. So after I published that, that was quite popular. And when the opportunity came up to write a book,、um, it was actually a book from an Australian publisher, not a New Zealand publisher. Um, because I think people in Australia as well had seen her response and wanted to learn more about her. And so when that opportunity came up from Black Ink, I knew that there was plenty of material there and she had had plenty happen, even in her short time as a politician and her relatively short life、uh, to fill a book. 2019年、ニュージーランドで起きたモスクでの銃乱射事件の時に、首相は被害者家族と抱き合いその姿は広く世界中に報道されましたそれからアーダーン首相は厳しい銃規制を迅速に実現し政治には優しさが必要だと説明しました優しさはニュージーランドの政治にどう生かされていると感じますか It was an almost unanimous opinion across the country that we had to change the law somehow. We didn't have the same issues as countries like the US, in that the people who were very pro gun, there aren't that many compared, you know, relative to the population. And even then, because it was so shocking, Everyone, virtually everyone was on board. So I think as much as Ardern absolutely said, we're going to do this and it was done, she did have to make, she, she needed other politicians to be on board with it. And I think that's sometimes they don't get much credit, but everyone in the house really. Everyone in parliament, even the people in opposition and the people who are arguing with her every day, 
they were very quick to agree and said, yes, we need to do this. So she wasn't having to fight a battle to get that done. She, but obviously if the prime minister doesn't want to do something, then they don't. So she had to want to do it too. But it definitely was helped by the fact that pretty much every politician was in agreement and helped it along and cooperated. And they had a full, you know, they had people from other parties helping put the legislation together. And it was really a group effort from everyone. It wasn't a Labour policy or a Prime Minister policy. It was everyone agreeing. So I think that's the, you know, she, if there was more opposition to it, there might have been, you know, it may not have happened, but we were lucky in that because the shooting was so shocking and we, everyone agreed that something had to be done, it was able to happen very quickly. America, there was a lot of the shooting that was happening in the UK, and there was a lot of the shooting that was happening in the UK, and there was a lot of the shooting that was happening in the UK, and there was a lot of the shooting that was happening in the UK, and there was There was no one after that shooting that was so horrific who was willing to come out in public and say, we should keep our guns. After a little bit of time, there were people who came out and said, this was too fast, you know, maybe. There has been the debate is more around how to make it effective rather than how whether we should do it or not. So it, it happened very quickly and everyone was in agreement. But like many things that happen quickly, it became apparent a little bit later that maybe some of the finer details were a bit harder to implement than they had thought. So They offered to the government offered to buy back guns that people owned. Obviously, a lot of people did present their guns and offer them back, but there are also a lot of guns, like anywhere with crime, that aren't registered and they're not going to give them back. And you know, it doesn't really matter whether they're legal or illegal, some people will have guns. So There was debate around how effective it's going to be when that's the situation with a lot of the gun ownership in New Zealand. There wasn't really as much, you know, this gun was bought legally that this gunman used. And so that's what shocked people. But a lot of gun crime in New Zealand is not done with guns that you can legally buy. So they're illegal anyway. And I think that's where the debate is, is how do we actually have gun laws that are effective for crime that is committed? アーダーン首相が任期中に妊娠、出産したことについて、ニュージーランド国内ではどのように受け止められたのでしょうか the, the news, the response was actually quite positive across the board. It was, there weren't You know, there were some people who said, oh, well, that's not very convenient. And, you know, it's going to be、um, a little bit tricky because her deputy prime minister was not from Labour. He was, he was further along to the right. And so there was a little bit of、um, people were wondering what would happen while she was away on maternity leave, which was not very long.、Um, but, That ended up going quite smoothly. And I think there was a lot of、um, people were quite proud because it made, again, it was world news and New Zealand likes to be looked fondly upon by the world. And it did seem like it was like quite a nice thing. You know, we were quite proud to say, oh, yes, this is not a big deal. And,、um, you know, this is very normal and fine. So I think actually people were quite. Excited and just liked the idea of it becoming more common. And obviously, there were a few babies in government at the time, and so it wasn't a new thing. There were a lot of photos of the Speaker of the House holding children and people waiting their turn to speak, and they've got their babies. So it wasn't 
it wasn't actually even that new. It was just new because she was the prime minister rather than a,、um, just a member of parliament. 過去の発言や生い立ちなどを通して、本書の中でアーダーン首相を分析されています。マデリンさんから見て、アーダーン首相とはどのような人ですか I think if I was going to describe her as a, when she was growing up, she wasn't very cool. She wasn't, she wasn't the really popular kid at school.、Um, she did debating and science fairs and speech competitions. So she was really just quite nerdy, I guess. And, but what she was really into was the advocating for students. She was on the student council, she was on the board of trustees as the student representative. And she really seemed to thrive in arguing for her fellow students or her community. So it was always that. Kind of political side was always there. She wasn't necessarily the leader that everyone was desperate to follow, but she was the leader in that she represented them to, say, the adults at the school. As she became a politician, well, politicians are not that cool to begin with. So The bar was a bit lower than being cool at school. So she was actually quite a cool politician. She used to go to the comedy shows. She was friends with a lot of actors and musicians. And because she was based in Auckland, she lived in the city and was quite young. So she was actually quite a cool politician compared to a lot of the kind of older, really richer politicians that were around. Um, and she obviously was very good at meeting new people and talking to people of all ages. So, by the time she became a politician and she was wanting to be prime minister, she was considered very cool and was the young, you know, future vote as opposed to the party that had been there for almost a decade. But I don't think. You know, she, when she does her Instagram posts and her Facebook posts, she never is, I don't think she's ever trying to be、um, particularly cool or、um, hip. She's just kind of, she feels, she feels relatable, I guess. She would be somebody who you would expect to bump into the supermarket, which I did bump into her at the supermarket a couple of times while I was writing the book. And Is always very pleasant and doesn't feel like a big, you know, a big presence or a big famous person. Takokno leader to Kurabete, Ardan Shishowa, Naniga unique de Tokbet Nano da to Moimaska? A lot of politicians around the world look and sound like politicians all the time. Ironically, she is a very good politician. She will never say anything unless she has really thought about it. She, she almost never has any slip ups with words or accidentally saying something she shouldn't. So she's very, very good, but the best ones make it look like they're not trying. So I think it is that sometimes you can think, oh, she doesn't seem like a politician, but that's almost because she is a very, very good politician. And that's what you need to do. So I don't know if she necessarily has things that others don't. She's just maybe, she's just a very, very good communicator. She studied communications, and that's been quite a funny thing of people often look down on communications as a, as a degree、um, versus. Say politics or something like that. And she studied that, and that's been the most effective thing that she could have, especially when there's crises. And that's the main thing is communicating is the key part. So, in that sense, she is an extremely good communicator. And that will always be something that very few people, even when they are leaders, have. Kanojo, she saw in Iranda, New Zealand, no, 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 no
I think the New Zealanders at the time, they just wanted a change. But we had had the same party and the same leader for almost nine years. And while that leader was actually quite popular, John Key, he he was quite popular, but no one, no party ever has managed to win four elections, which that was going to be the fourth election for them. Um, and until right up until Jacinda became the leader of the Labour Party, there wasn't really a good alternative. They had had a lot of different leaders who had all been, you know, to put it unkindly, quite bad. And so even though people were wanting a change and there were a lot of young people voting for the first time who were really wanting something different because they had had the same prime minister for like their whole teenage years, there wasn't a very good alternative. And so it wasn't looking like Labour were going to win. So as soon as she came in, it was quite a relief because long before she had stepped up to be leader of the Labour Party, people had wanted her to do it. And they had, there had been calls for her to do it because she was always more popular than the leader. And she had always said no until it, she kind of, at least the, I, the perception was that she had no choice because the leader decided to step down and she was the deputy. So that guy, Andrew Little, made a very smart and a little bit selfless move by realising that he wasn't going to be able to win and stepping down and letting Jacinda take over. And I think around that time, there had also, you know, this was 2017, there had been a few elections around the world the year before that had had quite surprising results, and the main one being the US election with Donald Trump. And that shocked everyone and it did motivate a lot of young voters and a lot of left left leaning voters to actually vote if they wanted to do anything different um, there was a fear that if they didn't someone might you know come through surprisingly um, and get into parliament or you know be a leader so there was definitely a push and a little bit of fear that New Zealand might do that too. And it really, and when Jacinda came, it was kind of the perfect antidote to someone like Donald Trump. Um, she really did seem like the complete opposite to him in lots of ways. And so people really were drawn to that as, as, as a bit of safety almost. America, Donald Trump危機感を覚えたニュージーランド人はトランプとは考え方やスタンスが対極にあるアーダーンを首相に選びたいと思ったということですがこれは裏を返せばニュージーランドにも移民を強く敵視する白人至上主義的なタイプの国民が数多く存
and get someone in parliament. Turned out they didn't even get close, but there was that, um, you know, you just never know. There was a, a sense that, oh, we might sort of not pay attention for a while and suddenly we've got this, these quite strange views represented in parliament. アーダーン首相の所属する労働党の支持率が低下しています。なぜだと思いますか ?I think it's the same as in 2017. People are, people are just ready for a change again.、Um, you know, it's been five years, but it feels like it's been ten from what everyone has been through.、Um, you know, for about two years, we were seeing The Prime Minister on TV almost every day for a couple of hours in press conferences. That is a lot of time for a Prime Minister to be in front of voters. And it's inevitable that people will get a little bit tired of seeing that person.、Um, usually, you only see them that much when they're asking you to vote, vote them into government. So she has had a lot of face time and it has. Answered a lot of questions and has spoken on a lot of issues. And I think now, with as I said, the, the government is sort of losing support for its response. It, it went in really, really hard for the initial response and it was very popular. And then, as those lockdowns started to drag on, it started to lose support from the businesses and the people who were losing money. And when they did that, they then weakened their almost kind of weakened their resolve to stop the virus. And then that loses support from your younger, more left leaning people. So no one, no government was going to get out of a pandemic with huge support because people are suffering, people are sick, people are dying. And you have. The Prime Minister is looking at you every day saying so.、Um, so it was always going to was always gonna have an effect on、um, the, this election, particularly. And I think people are just realizing that there are other issues still around. You know,、um, COVID is not the only issue, and the housing crisis is still a real problem in New Zealand, and that has not been solved or really helped by. The Labour government, the cost of living is higher than it's probably ever been, which is made worse by the pandemic, but it's also, again, has not been really helped. So people are starting to realise that their individual lives are quite tough at the moment, and the government that they've had has not helped that as much as they would like. And so people are looking for a change again. And it happens. You know, happens every time. It's very rare for a government to win three elections, and this will be the third election for Jacinda. It's still, it'll still be very close. So I'll be very interested. But unless something major happens, I think if they voted right now, it would be very, very close for who would win. Capital gain 課税とは株や会社、不動産を売買する際の価格差で得られる利益に対する課税で、主に富裕層からより税金を徴収するシステムですが、アーダーンは首相になる以前からキャピタルゲイン課税を導入することを考えていたにもかかわらず、結局その試みを見送りました。これはなぜだと思いますか ？I think personally, she definitely felt one way about it, which is that there should be a capital gains tax. And then I think we watched many, many leaders try to introduce it and it not work. And it looked like it made them lose popularity. And then I think she realized that it was not a thing that she could do. And it's a bit unfortunate because it is an issue that, if it, again, if it was communicated correctly, probably would have had more support. I think. The first time it was proposed, which was many years ago, they did not communicate it very well about what it would actually mean for people who owned a house. And now it's too, now people just think of that every time. And so 
it's also we're a country that has been sold that the buying a house and having a second house and maybe a third house is what you're supposed to do and that's the dream and so there's whole generations of older generations who were very much encouraged to do this and helped to do this and have multiple homes and are now really don't want to be paying tax on them so it's a it may be a generational thing perhaps in a, in 10 years maybe people will you know people like me who became an adult in the middle of a housing crisis might be more inclined to vote for something like that or a politician will be a bit younger and more inclined to try and push for it but i think she basically did the maths and realized that it was probably not worth potentially losing favor trying to push it through and they've done some since the book was published they have introduced some things um like a they've introduced a a sense of a capital gains tax and that they made it that you have to own your house for a very very long time before you don't have to pay a tax so they didn't call it a capital gains tax but they have kind of put one in place um and but there's still there's a lot of it's very nice to be a property owner in new zealand to put it that way it's a it's a pretty good investment アーダーン首相の存在はニュージーランドの印象をどのように変えたと思いますか I think it has changed positively.、Um, we're not used to being known for our leader. I think most people wouldn't be able to name another New Zealand Prime Minister unless they were from here. So that's quite strange for us. Usually the people who are known are from movies or musicians. Um, so it's quite nice to have a leader who is known、um, for good reasons around the world. But I think it's also, you know, Ardern was, was really at her best in a crisis. That's, that was where she could really shine. And we have had a lot of crises in the last five years. Um, the pandemic obviously was a huge one, and the initial response again, obviously, it is her. It's one of those ones where it relied again on all parties to be on board, and they were, and that, that helps. It helps when the leader of the opposition is also saying, listen to the Prime Minister and do what they say. But it also required somebody who was a very good communicator. To essentially convince people to stay home, almost shut down their lives for as little as four weeks, but potentially a lot longer. And for that to work, it does, it requires a kind of a trust between the citizens and the government, not just the Prime Minister, but the whole government. And it also helped that we were seeing. Responses overseas and seeing lots of ways that weren't working. And if that hadn't happened, I don't think the response here would have been the same. It was, we had the benefit of being at the end of the world and not having it reach us for, for a couple of months. And in those two months, we saw huge cases and deaths. And so when people saw that and we're told we can avoid this if we,、um, If we, you know, we do something quite serious, it was, there was a lot of buy in immediately. It was almost like a hundred percent agreement across the country, which is very rare. Since then, it has changed. You can't get people to stay home forever. And so it has meant that she can't. Rely on that empathy and that communication as much. And people were just saying, we want to go back to work. We want to return to normal. And I don't know if you've seen any of the latest news, but we have very high case numbers at the moment. It's very late, but we have very high case numbers and quite a few deaths. And that is basically because she reached the end of her. 
ability to convince people to follow in the interests of other people. So, I mean, we there was, again, it's kind of like the gun laws. It happened very quickly, the, the new laws about closing the borders and enforcing everyone to stay home. And that all happened within about 72 hours. So it was very, very quick that they all got passed. Everyone was in agreement. As time went on, people started to question how legal that was, whether it could have been done better, whether it could have had more consideration for different elements. And overall, they've, it's that it's that thing where technically some of it would be considered not legal. As you said, you can't, you can't or shouldn't necessarily force people to do something. But at the same time, it was agreed that everyone felt as though they were, they bought into it and they were part of it and they were doing it voluntarily as much as it was also required. So it, it changes and they, they would never be able to do that now. If there was another, I mean, there's lots of cases now, they would not be able, if they said we're going back into lockdown, people would not do it like they did the first time. 